Well, there was a, re a report recently, which you've covered uh, extensively, that found that the staff were claiming that they were pressured to instinctively or reflexively pursue the trans medication and surgery procedures. But I think those staff are, uh, are, you know, I mean, of course they're gonna say they're being pressured because there's quite a significant law, um, class action lawsuit out against Tavascott now, isn't there? What's the state of play with that? Well, the, the pressure that the staff felt, and it wasn't just at the Tavistock, it was elsewhere in the, the National Health Service, the pressure was to affirm uncritically. So, excuse me. <clears throat> so when a, a child presented um, as transgender uh, and said they had this distress in their bodies, instead of um, just noting that in a neutral way and starting to explore what's going on, looking at the kid holistically, trying to work out what's the basis for it. Instead of doing that, the pressure and the expectation was that you would immediately affirm the transgender identity, start using the opposite sex name, start using the pronouns. Um, and I guess the point again is that that may lead to false positives. Kids who think they're trans and who um, are desperate for these medical treatments, but in the long run, it's not really going to help them. Um, as for the litigation, there was a law firm, I think an international law firm, which announced that it was looking at a class action against the Tavistock um, over puberty blockers. But um, we haven't really heard anything more about that class action. They had estimated that there might be a certain number of families who would sign up whether or not those families have actually signed up, we just don't know. I mean, I've contacted this law firm a couple of times and there's just no reply. Right, okay, so let's move over to the US. There was a recently a, uh, a whistleblower in Missouri. Um, what's the state of play with that? That's a big deal. And uh, this story was broken not by the mainstream media, but by a new media outfit called the Free Press, which is run by ex-New York Times opinion writer Barry Weiss. And the story that they had was written in the first person um, by the gender clinic whistleblower, Jamie Reed. She's a Missouri woman, describes herself as queer, uh, to the left of Bernie Sanders politically. She's married to a trans man. She was extremely enthusiastic about these trans medical treatments initially. But over a number of years, she became extremely... Um, disturbed about what she was seeing at that clinic. There appeared to be no careful assessment of the kids that they were giving the irreversible opposite sex hormones to. The gender clinicians appeared to be lying, uh, you know, in public and, you know, to the state legislature about not referring minors for surgery, which in fact they were doing according to Jamie Reid. Um, there was no data being collected um, kids who had profound and serious mental health problems were assessed as eligible for physical transition and for the opposite sex hormones. You know, in a number of cases, Jamie Reed, when she saw just how disturbed these kids were, she thought, well, they, they won't transition that kid, they won't give that kid hormones, can't possibly, that kid can't possibly be in a state of mind to give informed consent, and yet it kept on happening. And Jamie Reid was trying repeatedly to make her concerns felt within the clinic. And the message was, well, if you don't like the way we operate, you should go. And so she then approached uh, Barry Weiss's free press um, outfit. And the story has had a huge impact in the States. Uh, I mean, just Will it lead to criminal charges, do you think? Well, the Attorney General in Missouri has launched an investigation. Um, Senator Josh Hawley, the, you know, the federal, federal Republican, has launched an investigation. There's a suggestion that, to the extent that some of these hormones are federally subsidised, there's a suggestion that it could be fraud. Um, and I suppose this is to do with the argument that um, there isn't a good evidence base for these medications and they are not able to do what they're claimed to do.